My name is Jamie and this is the vlog for September 13th, 2020. It's 5.20 p.m. and I'm having coffee. That tells you that last night was very long and that I expect tonight to be equally as long. Mm. There may be pauses in this because my kiddo is trying to pack her toys for our trip tomorrow. Clothes are pretty much packed. Um, we have an idea of the snacks and stuff we're bringing. The air quality today has been the worst it's been so far. Okay, pick three more. We need five stories. Pick three more. Pause. This video is going to be constantly interrupted. That's another one. So, welcome to my life. Anyway, um, we got the new TV and the new TV stand set up last night and I went to bed at 1 a.m. My husband was still working on getting everything set up, but I knew I had to get some sleep because I knew the kiddo was going to come wake us up and uh, at least I needed to be able to get up. <laughs> to my surprise, he got up a little earlier than I did this morning. Well, I think he went to bed for a while anyway. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so the new TV is all hooked up. The other one is up for sale. Um, that piece is done. We did some last minute shopping via Target Online and set up a drive up pickup since the air quality is awful and COVID. So nobody wants to go in. So we did that and we drove to uh, Bainbridge Island to pick up a local baker's cinnamon rolls because we eat cinnamon rolls maybe once a year, maybe. Um, so it's a real special treat. So since this is a special vacation, we will likely be stuck inside for a day of it still because of air quality concerns. Um, but we figured it'd be a nice treat. So, and even on the nutrition front, you can't separate food from people. You just, you just can't. Um, it's not the way we're designed. It's not. Uh, and that's okay. So you have a cinnamon roll and not the whole case of cinnamon rolls and you move on with your life you know? Uh, so we are uh, hoping to be able to go hiking still. There aren't any fires active in the area we are staying and there aren't any active fires currently that we would have to go around to get there. So we can go through um, two different areas and we should have a nice, nice little corridor smoke be the biggest challenge. Smoke and making sure that of course first responders have access to those roads. So we're not sure what's going to be closed yet. Um, GPS only tells so much, but that is what it is. So, um, hubs has been home for a week tomorrow and things are going pretty well. Um, we just stumble over the, the usual stuff. Like I am very used to doing things my way in my timeline. He's very used to things going his way in his timeline. So it's just a matter of like figuring, balancing all that out, meeting it and making it make sense. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, I think that's the biggest thing happening right now is getting ready for the trip. The house sitter is ready. The dogs are as ready as they're going to get. <laughs> um, nobody is sick, which is probably the biggest like, yay for a trip for us. Um, the kiddo get sick a lot, but since there's been no, um, really indoor activities for her outside of the house, outside of the house, no indoor activities under any roofs, but ours, basically at this point, she hasn't gotten sick. Um, hubs hasn't seemed to have brought anything home with him, which is awesome and completely unexpected. I am, I am the type of person who hopes for the best, but brings an umbrella. So I can, uh, I would rather be prepared for the worst and be pleasantly disappointed than, um, be completely off guard and unaware. And that mentality has its ups and downs, of course. <sighs> Biggest being catastrophic thinking is part of it, but that also prepares me for the worst case scenario. So if I'm prepared for that, everything else is, is bonus. On a superficial level, my legs and my ass are incredibly sore <laughs> from, from uh, 
kettlebells and coffee yesterday because I said I wanted to work on my half kneeling press and the only way to get there is to do reverse lunges and reverse lunges are hard for me neurologically speaking like coordinating all that forward lunges are easy for some reason my neurons don't like to fire with my foot backwards um and uh the press part is pretty simple um I'm easily able to press a 30 pound kettlebell over my head. That's no big deal. One armed from the floor, but putting the combo together, um, was what I asked for. <laughs> and now I'm paying for what I asked for, which is just fine. It's refreshing to feel sore because I remember back in the, back in the day, God, I feel old. I remember back when I was, um, a competitive Olympic lifter. Sore was a way of life. I was sore all the time. I didn't complain about it most of the time because it was just the norm. I'm looking forward to getting our garage shed lifting set up in because I'm feeling I'll do a lot more lifting um, than I do with my kettlebells and stuff now. Having a nice setup there. I am probably going back to the Y for mornings. Um, once the kiddo is back in school and we're back from this trip. And I think I have a few nibbles on people that are looking to do that, which will be fine. And if people aren't, that will give me my window to do that lifting stuff and that, you know, workout stuff I like to do. So win-win on that front. Um, the nutrition program is interesting. So the people who have been active and been working the program are seeing results and are happy. The people who are kind of coasting along aren't really seeing big results and aren't thrilled. You get out of things what you put into them. And paying for a program doesn't necessarily make it work, uh, especially something that works on changing your thought process. And when you change your mind, you change your body. That's just the way things work. Um, I think that about covers it. My brother is sending me amazing pictures from traveling the country. He was in St. Augustine yesterday and Virginia today. Uh, it's nice to see sunshine because you can't tell the sun's out. I would show you pictures, but they all look the same. It's a uh, dark gray. Can't see very much. Um, when you drive around or when we drove around, there was a point where you started smelling smoke in the car through the, um, the, uh, what was it? recycled air and the air conditioning you could still smell it <sighs> i am less panicked so driving around in the smoke was good for me psychologically because i'm still on high alert i will be until the smoke clears i just will be um but i am don't feel like i need to have a go bag by the door <laughs> which is nice because I know, especially since I've driven like 45 minutes around here, I know there's nothing, there's nothing burning here. It's far away, far, far, far away um, from us. The nearest fire is about 30 miles south. There's one that might be closer in the Olympics, but it would have to jump a giant body of water to cause us issue. So the crazy thing is when all these, these conditions come out, the fire bugs come out. And by fire bugs, I mean arsonists. Um, keep trying to light up fires in like Tacoma and other cities and areas. And then there's, in our heightened political climate, everyone's trying to assign political value to these arsonists. And it's just mind boggling. Um, I guess it's just people looking for answers and trying to put myself in their shoes, but Man, it is a strange, strange, strange time we live in. I think I got away with all this without an interruption, so I better go make sure that she's not getting into trouble. <laughs> so uh, today was incredibly smoky. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Wish us luck on the drive. <laughs>